Yeah, well, I'm going to ask that you hold your questions only because I'm so pleased that so many of you have stayed to the very end. And maybe you can ask the questions of um, uh, Dr. Fenley and Willis um, at our reception. All right. But I do want, because I want to close this, and I don't want, I don't want people to start going out and then uh, we lose our audience. But I want to thank you for, for coming. Um, everybody's given me thanks for uh, over the last two days, but I really want to thank you for coming. And it, it really does um, bear truth to the phrase, if you build it, they will come. <laughs> because for the last year and a half, you know, Marsha and I have been building this without knowing whether or not anybody would come. So you have really um, met our, uh, uh, you know, you've just fulfilled all of our dreams and expectations. Let me say just a, just a couple of things. Number one, uh, you will be able to um, get the, uh, the podcast and you will be able to tune in to, uh, you go on the internet to Rutgers iTunes and you can access this conference. I, I'm not exactly sure when they will have it ready. It's got to be edited, et cetera, but keep looking for it and it will be there. As well, um, you know, we do have a Facebook. That was one of the ways that we did um, some of the advertising. And we are considering um, setting up a Facebook so that, you know, you all can communicate with each other. I would, though, like to say a couple of things just about how this, how this conference came about. And, and just give me two seconds for it. It, it was not as if, I mean, th I really have to say that we have a wonderful academic atmosphere here at Rutgers. Um, there's no accident that it's here, that the, that, uh, the money uh, became available. But I was, um, I re uh, Ruth Mandel was here earlier, and she is uh, center, she's head of the uh, Center for Women in Politics, and she said something to me, and she said staff. And I was like, no, there was no staff here. <coughs> there were two people who put this together. And that was uh, myself and Marsha Barrett. We did not do it with a staff. We got the support of um, two people in the history department who more or less showed Marsha how to do things. But basically, it was two people. And it's, it, that speaks to But what it says is, is, is that it says, speaks volumes about black women in the academy. It's like if you want something done, it's not like you're going to have a staff to do it. You are going to pretty much... Um, okay, well, that's all right. I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I've been in the dark for a while, so... Uh, <laughs> I, I've been there before, too. Um, so that we didn't have a staff, but it, it, it does speak volumes about what African-American women, what black women do and have to do in the academy. Because we have said everything about building community and building this and writing letters and being a mentor and you know, basically talking about how to be a superwoman. And this is something that, um, this is just something that, that we do. Let me also say about this, this did not come about, they did not walk up to me and say, hey, Deborah, we want you to give a conference. Here's the money. No. I will only give you the very short skinny on this. This came as a result of a competitive offer. So it was sort of a strong arm movement on my part. I've heard everybody give their list of things to do, how to survive in the academy. I felt that I would give my list of 10 things before I released you for wine and cheese and for some um, celebration uh, with some spirits involved. I want to begin with what Cheryl Finley said. Go for your passion. And I mean that, it, it, you know, if you're in the academy, even though many of you, particularly if you 
are of my generation and your, your people, and I mean your people are saying, what are you doing that for? Hey, this is what I want to do, go for it. But I also mean to say this, for those of you who are choosing research topics, don't go after the topic because you think, oh, this is going to be good, this is going to get me a job. Because by the time you finish, and I mean by the time you write your dissertation, by the time you research it, by the time you write it, by the time you stay with it for how many years before you get tenure, you, I don't care how much you liked it, you will learn to hate it. You will get up in the morning with it, you will go to bed with it, and by the time you finish with it, you will say, why did I choose this? So you want to get something that you really, really love in the beginning. Second, speak up. Women, I, I've, um, I was uh, chair of the history department here at Rutgers for three years, and one thing I can tell you, I can say every single woman who came in did not speak up. This was, this was across the board, regardless of race. Every time we made an offer to an assistant professor, and it was a guy, he came back with some demands. He wanted a little bit more of this. He wanted a little bit more of that. The women didn't say anything. You almost had to say, will you call somebody up and say to them to ask? That you, you know, because the only thing they can do is say no. And, and by the time they've gone through the whole search process, Trust me, they want you to come. So you need to speak up and just, uh, and, and that goes across the board for your whole career. Have friends outside of academia. <laughs> I have some of my buddies here. <laughs> and, and you just need to, um, to, to be around people who are different. <laughs> I mean, it's great to have people in, in academia, because we've all talked about that in terms of academia. But you know, you need to have a life outside the academy. That is a life that will probably keep you the most sane. Celebrate when you can. That's something that uh, we've heard a lot about. Because you know what? You can, you will all, there, there's, there's so much sorrow, and there's so much tragedy, and there's so much life being hard that you really do need to celebrate every single milestone that you can. If it's your birthday, celebrate. If you got a, a good call and you know from somebody, you got anything, just just take the time to celebrate. Also, because we, you know, we don't do the the regular nine to five, you really need to schedule in your breaks. You need to schedule in your vacations because you can work. 24-7, because your office oftentimes is your home. I'm on leave right now. I can get up and work. I don't even have to change my clothes. <laughs> I don't have to wear clothes. <laughs> <laughs> that means I can work anywhere, anytime, under any circumstances. And if I tried to do it, I would go crazy. All right? So I think that was, um, that was number uh, uh, five. Right. Give somebody a no card and accept one yourself. There's a person in this room who I gave a no card to. I won't say who that person was. And I said, here's, here's, my, here's the no card. And when they call you, as they inevitably will and as they inevitably do, and they say, we need you to do that, you have my permission to call me at any time of the day and night, so ask me if you should say no. Always wait 24 hours before you respond to anything, whether you want to say yes or no. But also call somebody up and ask them, should I do it? Call some, that's, that, that leads me into um, my number, where am I at, seven? And that, that is that you do need community. Um, during this uh, competitive offer that I received, I called, some other, I called quite a few people in this room. People who were both inside academe and outside academe. And I said, well, they, they, you know, what should I do? How should I do it? 
And you need to have these people who you can call on to, um, to get advice. I am a writer. I know that not everybody in this room is in the humanities or in the social sciences where you, do, you definitely have to publish or perish, but you do have to do research and uh, as long as you are in academe, I suggest that you do some every day. Even if it's only for half an hour, even if it's only for an hour, you need to stay with your work and do it on a regular basis you know, know yourself. If you know that you have to clean up your room, you have to clean up the kitchen, you have to dust, you have to vacuum, you have to do your laundry before you sit down, that's all right. Just do it and then sit down. Because we all have our patterns and we, can, we all know under what circumstances we work well. And some of us really do have to have a clean desk. The whole house has to be clean before we feel we could sit down. So you do, you do definitely need to do that. Have something else that you like to do. My passion throughout, uh, before I got arthritic knees, is that I love to play tennis. And it was something that whenever I got tired of work or, you know, it was just something that took my mind off of the academy. So always have a, have, a, have a passion that is outside academe and do it and schedule in time, schedule time to do it. I think that's 10. Nine? No. Oh yeah, I got it. Pay it forward. And this is one of those things that should have been written on those bellies. <laughs> What goes around, comes around. You give it up, you help other people, and invariably, it's not maybe the same person who will come back and help you, but it, you know, not only should you pay it forward because it will make you feel good, but at some point, somehow, that it, it will come back to you. And, you know, um, the other thing, you know, if it's, uh, well, shit happens. <laughs> but if you pay it forward, what goes around will, in fact, come around. So let's give ourselves all a hand. Let's retire to the cafe and let's have... Um, some wine and cheese. So long. <laughs>